subscribe and like LA TV yo okay now that I'm free what do I do I got out of the clutches of my parents, the ones who were supposed to do their best to uplift and cultivate me. I am free from them, free from their confusion of thought, confusion from belief personal beliefs based on life's experiences taught or more often than not not taught by their parents free from the big one the oppression of religion overbearing religion nonetheless my mom was heavy into church I didn't mind that because it seemed as though being around her church sisters kept her happy and busy. And even then, they were always, the church people, were always doing something positive. Be it from cooking for others, cooking for the saints, they were cleaning, they were singing, they were praying, they were talking, they were just being amongst one another. And every single time, even if they were having a bad time or if someone was in the kitchen crying in the church, it was just all the ladies around gathered. And despite it all, there was a joyous, a joyous energy coming from downstairs in the church kitchen all the time. Even if there were little arguments or bickerments that happened amongst them because one of the sisters was telling the other sisters of the church he should or shouldn't be doing this or personal advice it never came across as some Jerry Springer ish even though looking back based on some of the conversations they were doing some Jerry Springer ish it was still all conducted in the guise of sisterhood but it was a pure sisterhood, not just saying sisterhood because that's what you say or what you do. Just what you say or what you do, like when people just casually throw around I love you. And that's even changed. So having said all that, I was free from my parents' upbringing which shaped them and molded them into parents to be unfortunately the authoritative figure over my life and disciplinarian over my life. They poured their information and core values, thoughts and assumptions based on life's difficulties onto me and none of the stuff they told me made sense almost 1000% of the time. Now that I escaped them, meaning moved out of the house, Literally, like for real, I moved out of the house, I think, in my early 20s, and that was a fight too. All my life, I had to fight. I had to fight to feel included, to, I had to fight to feel like I was included into the family. To feel like I was a part of the family. To feel like I belonged in the family. To feel like they even wanted me. Um, to fight and to have to get out of the family. Because they didn't want me to leave. So now that I was free from them. I went out of the frying pan into the fire. Or should I say... I left the frying pan and went to hell. <laughs> but you know, that's the merry-go-round of life, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, space aliens and beyond them. What is it, Astra? What is it? Aliens and I wrote about them. What are, what are those things called? Sorry. 
They start with an A. Astrologers or something. I don't know. They're beyond aliens too. But hello, what's up all y'all? Everything and everyone in this universe and beyond. Yo, I tell you the cycle is real. If you don't get the things you need from the ground up, you're going to repeat them whether you want to or not. And I repeated it and I was in an eight year S storm that I had to get out of. It was so hard. So I left my family who I lived with for like, let's just say 23 years. About 23 years of my life, I lived with my family, my alleged biological family. Then I finally got the strength the courage and wherewithal to find an apartment and move out on my own and then it wasn't long before that I got into more trouble I went to hell by getting into bad, a bad relationship you know because unfortunately daughters based on my based on my Example, based on the examples of my life, it is, seems to be true via my personal experience. Daughters gravitate to their fathers, even if they don't like their fathers. So what made it worse was the person I gravitated to was extremely more worse than my dad. Not better, at least. Extremely worse. So I was in that for like eight years. But what made it so bad was like, it was hard to get out because I just got out of one situation, got into another, but here I am counting my blessings based on religion to count your blessings and not be showing non-gratitude so I'm in an unhealthy relationship kind of my blessings saying well, at least I'm not living at home with my parents at least I have a car and I can go wherever I want but I couldn't at least I could watch TV but I couldn't you know just crazy stuff so what I'm saying is congratulations on black and based on the history of malnourishment as far as getting the proper structure on how life is supposed to be led what we're supposed to tolerate what we're not supposed to accept in life in general, I fell into the siphon or the cycle, siphon and or cycle of repeating the same circle everyone else around me and my alleged family did. The thing is, despite the hell, despite the fact that I fell right into the same snare, the same thing I didn't want the same thing I didn't want to be like everybody else surrounding me was doing I didn't want to accept that I chose to fight and I was so tired of fighting already I've been fighting for like 23 years and then I get into a horrible relationship after getting free and to go into hell and I had to fight again I was tired but I still had the strength to fight I didn't want to, but I had to, you know, for the sake of the future, for the sake of my future. This was before my son was born. So like, even in my mind, for, for the sake of my future children, I had to fight because I owe them that. I refused to be fickle in the mind like my parents. I passed the same old mess, not knowing stuff, and all that negative stuff. 
and down to my to my to my people to you know to my children and to my future husband you know I was thinking futuristically and that's how it should be congratulations I'm black I realized I was a product of my environment even though we lived in the quote-unquote suburbs it was just outside it was just an outside looking in type of situation where everything on the outside looked like roses, but on the inside it was not. I was a product of my ecosystem environment in my house, which was confusion, chaos, misfortune, terrible mismanagement, overbearing, judgmental, critic criticizing, hypocritical, contradictory, Cold, isolated, delusional, psychotic. I was a product of my environment. Of a ball of confusion. Because when I list all those things and put it in one hula hoop. You stir it all up, it's just all confusion. No matter, no matter how you shake and bake it. And pick it apart. Hello, I'm black. Congratulations, I'm black, a product of my environment. Although I live in the suburbs, I was not the suburbs. I, in our house, it was not the suburbs. It was still the ghetto. And honestly, my argument was, why didn't we just stay in the ghetto? Because I felt better off there. When I woke up to a reality in the hood, I knew where I was. I knew where everything was at. But let's not get it twisted. I knew who I was. I knew where I was at. I knew I was poor. But I knew I could be anything I wanted to. Not saying I wanted to stay in the hood to have a low quality of life. What I'm saying is we didn't live beyond our means. I was comfortable because everything just seemed better. Even though we were like super duper poor, I woke up and it wasn't a fabrication. I woke up and I knew what I was being dealt with. So all that stuff that I saw visually, I didn't have to think beyond. All I had when I woke up in the hood was the right now. Me, living my day, enjoying the moments, taking everything for what it was. I didn't have friends, but it didn't feel too bad. Cause at that time, I made my peace with a lot of things. Everything was just simpler, and it's not because I was a kid. Everything was just simpler because we weren't living beyond our means. At that time, we weren't. We, is when I say me, my mom, and my sister, we weren't too overwhelmed with all that religious stuff. I knew we were like unbelievably poor, but we still had more, I guess, healthier memories opposed to moving to the suburbs where things really intensified and didn't make any sense at all. We were supposed to move to the suburbs to have a better life but it was completely worse it was horrible and I wish we just stayed where we were congratulations on black 
product of my environment unbeknownst to myself until I realized when I moved from the clutches of my alleged parents and repeated the cycle by dating someone who was 10 times, 60 times worse than my dad. I realized I was mirroring the same footsteps that footsteps as every single person in my family. I was so disappointed in myself because I didn't want to be like them. I was a good person with a good heart and good intentions. I knew right from wrong, but here I was still. Still making stupid mistakes like my family. And I couldn't understand. And that's what made me realize generational curses are real. But I refused to just accept it because everybody in my mom and them was seeming to be comfortable living in the funky lifestyle of making mistakes over and over and over and over and over again. <laughs> I do make mistakes, but I refuse to accept them. I chose to change them no matter what, no matter what, no matter what, no matter what, and I'm glad I did. Congratulations on black, a product of my environment, my environment meaning inside what go went on in my house. Not environment like suburbs, but deeper. Congratulations on black, product of my environment. My environment being shaped mentally around the mentalities of poor minded, poor thought, poor unthoughtful, mixed up black people mental environment product of my mental environment amongst the suburbs amongst the foliage of the product of being amongst from the outside looking in if that makes any sense congratulations on black the product of a mental environment a mental environment that was like a sewer <laughs>